Shalom, welcome to our daily class from Rabbi Nachman and Patreon. We are beginning a new Torah today, Torah 56. And it is an important Torah, I think, because we experience these things in life that we don't really understand why. And then the Hacham, the Kabbalist, the Rabbi comes along and explains them how they're intuitively true, but externally hidden. And so we see that the Torah comes along and gives us ideas that we didn't actually know were true, that we thought were just fantasies. And in this Torah he begins, On the day of the first fruit offering, right, which will be coming up soon, the Hag of Shavuot, that you will bring a new grain offering. Mikra Kosh, it is called holy, and it will be to you, call Melechet al lo ta'asu, and won't work on that day. You know, a lot of people associate not working with being a king, right? <laughs> I don't think it works that way. I think that kings really, if they're good, they really got to work. But there is this association with not working in the normal human capacities uh, that kind of we associate to a king. But look what he writes. Ki yesh b'chol acham Yisrael b'chinat malchut. Every single Jew has an aspect of the king inside him or her. V'chol achad l'fi b'chinat or each person according to their quality or their aspect. Ken yesh lo b'chinat malchut. So too will be their kingship. What does he mean? Yesh hu shorav v'veto. There is first type of king is a person who rules over their house. Right? It could be a, a one-person house, a two-person house. You could have ten kids. You could have more. You're king over that house. And a lot of queens could be kings, too, nowadays. So don't get confused. That he is the, the leading decider. The king is the one who decides. The buck stops here, as Harry Truman said. And then there's somebody who... He doesn't just rule over his his house, he rules over the entire world. Well, that's a big jump in job description. And every person according to the kingship that he has. Now, what is this power of kingship that he's talking about? Because I remember being a kid and feeling like a king, and then uh, I was quickly knocked down, you know. <laughs> oh, but what does it mean? This aspect of kingship. What is the premier quality that we associate with a king? Well, in Kabbalah, kingship is the ability to give over, to take something abstract and make it real in the world, to take an idea and bring it down all the way into the four directions of this planet. Kingship is the ability to, to create from all the resources at your availability. Kingship is not the, just simply the quality to sit on a throne and tell other people what to do. That's, that's not really a big deal. <laughs> Anybody can do that. It's to know what people should do to be their best and to make the kingship, the kingdom, run its best. So it's the ability to recognize the qualities in everybody else and put them together in a way that things work nice, that people get along, that people uh, respect authority and yet also, of course, respect themselves. Now, that's just a very short introduction about what kingship is. But, it's, but chiefly in Kabbalah, it's this ability to take life force and give it to somebody else. To pass it along. And this is an aspect of Sare Alafim, Sare Meot, Sare Hamishim, Sare Asarot. This is what Jethro, Yitro in the Bible, who was Moses' father in law, told him. This job is too big for you. Create a judicial system. Met ministers of a thousand, ministers of a hundred, ministers of fifty, ministers of ten. They will adjudicate their little groups. And then any problem that's too hard for for them, they'll, they'll come to you, Moses. And it's a kind of a logical thing. But it took his father-in-law to see it and to suggest it, and he had the merit to. 
Now, Malchut Azot Shiyesh Bechol Echad. Now, this kingship that each person has, he bids Galia Vit Kasia. There's two aspects, first of all, that we recognize. One is that it's there's a hidden and a revealed kingship. And he explains. Vit Galia, you know, Memshala Shiyesh Lel Kol Echad Vavi Bechinato. So the, re- the revealed kingship is that's what's revealed. How much people listen to you. How many people receive from you. That will measure a certain quality or aspect of your kingship. If you're a boss at work and you have 10 employees, then it's clear that they all listen to you or try to or hopefully. Then, then that's your kingship in that context. And that's revealed because everybody knows that you're the boss. And it's revealed that he that he rules over them. The word rule is a little uh, rough here for the democratic mindset, but okay. And again, according to the kingship that he's been given, now in the hidden kingship, the kingship of that nobody sees, nobody knows who's pulling the strings. Nobody knows who's behind the scenes. That's also a type of kingship. Everybody also has a hidden kingship. Those are the people that receive from you and you don't even know that they receive from you. These are the people that you influence and you don't even they don't even know. Nobody knows that they're getting their inspiration from you. Because you could have an idea tomorrow morning that get, hits wakes somebody else up on the other side of the planet. Because we live on an integrated network of soul. Right? And soul is made of ratzon, desire, longing, will. And if you wake up with a certain inspiration, a certain will, and it 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 touches the souls that are connected to you, no one might even know about it. But it happens. It happens for me every time I think of calling somebody and they call me first. So I know that if I'm thought of calling them and they call me, that means that we're connected. That means there's a, a give and take going on. There's a, reve- a revelation of a tiny aspect of kingship. Now he explains further this hidden kingship. And even though in the revealed world, it doesn't even seem that they have any influence on anybody. Nevertheless, with all that, it's in a very hidden way, he can still rule over them. You know, it's like that, the Wizard of Oz, right? <laughs> nobody, nobody knows who's behind the curtain. And yet he's still the source of authority behind it. And this is the way the soul, the spiritual world works. Ki, because we live in a pyramid of soul. Not only is it an inter- integrated network of soul, but it's a pyramid shape. And therefore there's an authority at the top and it spreads down, down, further, further, wider and wider. So those souls that are beneath you on the pyramid receive from you whether anybody knows about it or not. And they are subdued, so to speak. They they receive uh, without resistance. And this also, this idea of the hidden kingship, each person has this, whether they know it or not. And this is the idea of the sorry Alafin, the ministers of a thousand, the ministers of a hundred, etc., now this is the, the whopper over here, folks. There is a person who in the revealed way has no rulership over anybody. Right? He just sits at his desk and nobody listens to him and he doesn't bother anybody and it just goes on like nothing's happening. Nevertheless, in a revealed, a super secretive way, who Moshe I'll call a door. He can be the person who's ruling the entire generation. What does it mean, ruling? Telling you when to eat breakfast, when to go to work? I don't think that's the kind of kingship we're after. No, it's the type of distribution of God's life force into the world. The distribution of new ideas. The distribution of new inspiration. And one of the main inspirations, of course, is self-sacrifice for a greater idea. 
Vafil okol tzaddik ador, and even on every righteous person in the generation, ki kol nishmoteihem heim kulam tachav memshelto memchmachuto. Even of all the righteous rabbis you see running around, they have a hidden king over them. Vakulam nechnaim vakufim alav, and all of them are beneath him and receive from him in a hidden way. Rakshu behelam gadol, but it is in a great hidden way. And this is an idea, in the verse we see the prophet Malachi was one of the last prophets. He said, God said, in every place that's sanctified and, and, and where incense offering is brought for me. In other words, any place where we say, this is for God, we sanctify that place. This is the place where there's a tree in your backyard where you sit and talk to Hashem. That tree is sanctified for that work. And it becomes special. And it's for God's name. Because that's essentially what you're doing. You're revealing that you believe in Him in that place. And all place means also in certain souls. Hashem chooses to reveal Himself through people. We have no idea why and who they are. Sha'afshu of Dimavarazar. And He even says if they serve idols. I'll call it so, we don't understand. That's the first thing we always have to understand, right? Is that God can rule the world in a hidden way through people we don't, under, we don't know or who they are, or they're above us, below us, and even people who serve idols, you know, or people on crosses or whatever. Or, you know, people worship all kinds of things nowadays. But still, they're, they're serving God on a certain aspect, but it's in a hidden way. So too, this idea of the hidden kingship that each person has, because even in a revealed way, we don't see any rulership in a hidden way. He rules over them. They're still subdued underneath him in this pyramid of soul that is bringing down infinite light into the finite vessels of this world through the minds of human beings. So this is something that is, is obviously a bit mystical, right? But the first rabbi of Chabad Rev. Schnorr Zalman, he said a beautiful thing. He said, God runs the world through the people with broken hearts. Interesting idea. Oh, you mean God doesn't run the world through Putin and Biden and Musk and, and Trump? <laughs> that's, a, that's a sentence, right? No. It looks like he runs the world through those people in a revealed way. But in a hidden way, no. And he says each per and those people don't even know who the, the real sources of power are. Because all the sources of power are in holiness. Then they get spread out into the world, even when they go way beyond the boundaries of holiness into the world of the other side and the dark places. Okay, and so why did the Rebbe say that God runs the world with the broken hearted people? Because when your heart is broken, you're the one chosen to reveal the light. See, the light is what breaks our hearts. It's the light that enters us. It's too big to hold. And it, you just burst forth with either tears or song or joy, dancing. It could be expressed in a lot of ways. But it's that inability to hold it in. And that's when your heart breaks, you become a, a source of distribution for that light to others. And that changes our take on why we suffer, why we go through what we, what we go through, who we are, what we're here to do. 
Because maybe, even though we think we don't have any power over anybody, maybe God chose you for that light to come through you anyways. Because you're in the right place at the right time to do that job. To bring his light to a place that no one else knows. And that's an awesome thing. Now, it's not something you want to go <laughs> bragging to your friends about. But it's certainly something that you can carry with you in your heart that at least now I understand a little more of how God runs the world through the hidden places and the hidden people because the work is not telling people what to do. The work is receiving the life force that other people need and the insight and the wisdom and the inspiration and all the good qualities that it takes to get through this place. Okay? So I want to bless all of you to know this, to live it, to carry your peace, to know that you are a queen or a king in a certain way. And to ask Hashem, well, if God, if I'm here to do something for you, let me do it. Show me. Guide me. Let me be your man, your woman in the right place at the right time. And then you will see that his kingship, how it spreads open before you like a, a perfect internet <laughs> of divinity and ratzon, of will, and um, things start to make more sense. So God bless you all. We're going to continue our daily classes on Rabbi Nachman and Patreon. And, uh, well, we're rolling forward. We hope to finish this book be before the end of time. But, you know, it's, it's paragraph by paragraph, word by word, because that way we get it deep and it, it, it could change us. And that's what it's all about. God bless you all. Have a great day.